How is it going, everybody? Root of the Null here, coming back at you with some more Python tutorials. And finally, we're going to create our own thread with the threading module. Okay, so in my main function, I've just kind of uh, saved all the code that I used in the last tutorial so we don't have to rewrite that all out. And uh, what I want to show you guys is obviously how to create that new thread. And uh, we're going to keep it as a variable or as an object because we actually want to be able to keep track of it in our code, right? So I'm going to call mine, uh, how about our thread or something, and that's going to equal the threading modules function, and it's a call to their thread object little constructor here. So it's just thread. Keep in mind that is a capital T though. So when we run that, <coughs> we've got uh, nothing really happening. Here, I'll show you this in the code. Uh, all of the same stuff that we had before, uh, that's what it does. It does that. Uh, nothing is really changing due to our thread. Well, okay, let's see what we can do with this. Our thread is a thread, and we haven't really given that thread anything to do right now. But keep in mind that a thread is a process, right? It's something that's happening. It, it's like any sort of code. So, what if we went ahead and created a new function? Uh, something that our thread would do. Uh, I'm gonna call mine, like, do this. Pretty simple, pretty easy, nothing there. And what if I just said, print, maybe, uh, this is our thread. Something simple, something really easy. We could, like, obviously call this function ourselves within the main function, but what if we wanted to just sort of do this all at a different time, and that's why we're gonna use that thread to do it with. So, our thread is gonna equal this thread, and we just created it over here, it, what it's going to do is it's going to print, this is our thread. So let's go back to the definition, and let's tell this thread object that this is the, uh, the function that we actually want it to look at. This is what we want it to do. In that case, that means that it's a target. And target is the keyword, or the keyword argument, that you pass in to this little object constructor here in the, the initializer to say, I want to do this. I want to use that function. And we don't include the parentheses here because we're just referring to the function. So do this is going to know, okay, we're going to run this function over here. So if I run this, nothing really happens. Well, what the heck? We wanted something to happen, right? We just created our thread. Well, when we create a thread, if we want it to execute, what we have to do is run our thread dot start. And what that will do is we'll initialize or like call a different function called run that's separate or at least it's part of this object or the thread, but it calls it in a different process. It does it uh, in a separate dimension <laughs> or however you want to think about it. It starts it in a different way so that it will start the function at a separate interval or a separate process from what you're already working in in your thread. So if I run this now, you said, this is our thread, and it says two. And two, you can see that two up there, that is part of this print statement here, threading.activeCount. But it's on the same line as this is our thread, the, the same thing that happened from calling the do this function. Why is it doing that? Well, keep in mind, we just told two different functions to, at the same time, print something out. So maybe, sometimes, one thread will get to a statement first. And that could be a little difficult. What if we only wanted things to happen one at a time after a thread has already been called and this sort of thing? That idea gets into locks, which we're going to be getting into really soon for the series. But for now, you need to know that this is our thread just ran. It just finished over there. Our thread dot start, we ran it. And if we call this again, this is our thread two. And it's going to keep happening over and over and over again. And we can see it. Oh, 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 oh. We can see it right up here. In the enumerate function, we saw that, okay, there's a thread happening right over there. It's part of our thread. But in the other calls, we see that it, it wasn't there. There's only one thread happening, but we still ran this thread. So, you have to keep in mind that because these things are happening at the same time, sometimes one might finish before the other one. It gets a little hectic when we're using threads, but it keeps things happening. Like, it, it's fast, right? It's how we can multitask. I'm going to bring my terminal back up here. And that's kind of what I wanted to show you. 
you can see that it ended over here when it didn't end over there. At least they thought it was still an active count. There are two threads running, even though there's nothing in the enumerate function. So that means that thread 2, the do this thread, must have ended in between calling active count and enumerate. So it can end at any other time. But when a function ends, when a thread ends, is when the function is actually returning a value, when it does anything. Now, we didn't have the return statement in there before, because Python knows, that okay, we reached the end of the code block, we're just going to return out of it anyway. The function is over. And that's exactly what's happening when we run our code. A lot of crazy stuff happening, right? That's what happens with threads. Okay. Active count doesn't always see that thread, though. That's what I want to show you guys. Sometimes it's two. We saw it earlier as one. So keep in mind, with these threads running, sometimes things can get a little hectic when you're running code at the same time. One thread might finish before another one, or you might not be able to see one thread, and blah, blah, blah. But let's keep this in mind, and let's move on to the next, the next tutorial and the next new couple of concepts. I want to stress how you can end or return from a thread, and that's what's going to be considered the end of that. We'll, we'll play with that in the next video, but this is it. We actually created a thread, and we got to experiment with it and see what it does. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. I know it's a little hectic and crazy right now because we have so many things going on, <laughs> but that's the point. Cool. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.